Welcome to this short video on Support Central enablement for SaaS customers. In this video, we'll cover some common tasks such as managing support IDs, case management activities, as well as uh, updating and maintaining contact lists. If you're an existing customer, all registration information has been migrated to Support Central, and you will be able to log in using your existing credentials. All existing support IDs will be associated with your account. We'll first use a browser to go to support.bmc.com and use your existing credentials to log in. Once you're logged in, you're able to do several different tasks. The first item we will look at is managing support IDs. You can add or remove support IDs from your profile. These support IDs come from an email from BMC Order Services at the time of purchase. If there are any questions, you can contact customercare at bmc.com for further assistance. The next area we'll look at is the case management details. From here, you will be able to see your open cases and change requests. From this view, you're able to look at your requests that you submitted or all requests for a specific support ID. You can change the filtering based on start and end dates that will show only cases modified during that date range. You can look at statuses for open, closed, or all, as well as you're able to search or filter based on different criteria. In this example, we'll look at filtering by environment and we will select the environment as the criteria, and we will look for all changes or cases for the Calbro ITSM dev environment. The create a case option is used if something isn't working correctly, such as users cannot log in, or if you have a general question or operational request, such as database backup or to request a log file do when you create a case is to select the environment. For all environments associated with the support ID, you're able to see them here. We see Calbro ITSM, we see the BMC Helix Operations Management, and Discovery products that are associated with this profile. Once that's selected, we would now populate a subject or a summary of the problem that we're reporting. As we type in the subject, the possible solutions are updated that relate to this subject that you've entered. This information can be further filtered to show only knowledge base articles, documentation, uh, community posts, videos, etc., or the default is everything is displayed to the right. As we type our description, that information is also used to help refine the possible solutions that are displayed. We would then set the severity and contact method, uh, any of the group CC contact instructions, uh, as well as attaching an attachment of screenshots or any detail that may be uh, useful to help uh, describe your problem. Once all the information has been entered into the case form, you're able to click the submit button and this case is submitted. Once the case is submitted, a summary screen is displayed that includes the case number. If you have any additional updates to add to the case, you can do that in the case update section by entering in the information, attaching any files, and then clicking the share button. This case updates area is also where any updates from the support analyst that is working your case are posted as well. So you're able to monitor those from this same view. Next task we'll look at is lifecycle requests. These requests are commonly required during your onboarding phase. We'll click on lifecycle requests, and that will take us to the lifecycle request form. Once the lifecycle request form is displayed, you'll select the environment and select the type of lifecycle request. For the different types of requests, you will have to complete additional fields and then click the Submit button, and the lifecycle request is submitted. If you do not see a request that you need, you can use the Create a Case option for that. 
The next area we'll look at is requesting a change. You'll use this option when making a change to your system, such as promoting code, requesting a cache clear, etc. Click on Request a Change and complete the form that's displayed. First, include the change summary information. Describes a summary of the change you are requesting. Next, we'll select the environment. Provide the target deployment URL. And the requested start date and time. This is based on the time zone indicated on your screen. This is requested for February 4th, 2022 at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll select the change duration, the risk level, and provide the detailed change steps. The backout plan steps will be provided, and the post change validation steps. You can provide other group CC contact information, as well as attachments with information related to this change. Once you have all the information finalized, you can click the Submit button, and the change will be submitted. The change request will show the summary screen. It will show pending until the change is created. Once that change is created, that will be updated with the CRQ number. If there are any updates to the change, you can do a post to add any details or additional attachments. The next task we'll look at is approving a change. If you are a change approver, you can click on approve a change and you will see the pending approvals that are in your inbox. Neither approve them from this list via the approve or reject buttons, or you can click on the CRQ number to see the details of the change. From within the details, you're able to approve it or reject it from there. Once you do approve, you'll get notification that the change has been approved via this pop-up message. The last area we'll look at will be the contact list. This requires a company-issued email address to access this screen to make updates to these lists. Once you click on the contact list, you're presented with the different uh, environments that you have. From here, you will select the contact list type. In this case, we're selecting an emergency contact, and all existing contacts would be listed. If you need to add one, you can click the Add button. You're presented with this dialog, and you'd provide the information and click Submit. This contact then would be added to that list. For the change approvers, we see that we have several change approvers already uh, defined in the list. If we needed to uh, add one, we can add it similar to the emergency contact we just saw. Or if we need to delete one, we can select the row that we want to delete, the person's name, and then we can click Submit. This will remove them from the Change Approver role. For further information, you could look at the Support Central Reference Guide on the Support Central website. Thank you for taking time to review this enablement video.